about this machine you've developed? You're looking for a volunteer, aren't you? It's not that simple. Where do I find you when I get to Darwin? Driving? Are you really going to do this? I've never been more sure of anything in my life. Hi everyone, I'm here with Jeremy Sims, Michael Payton and Mark Cole-Smith of Last Cab to Darwin. Hi guys, thanks for joining us. Yep, good to be here. Michael, can you tell me what attracted you to this particular part and kind of what, at what stage of the process you became involved with Last Cab? Oh, listen, I was uh, probably five years in um, and it just felt that I was just going through the movements of an odd dentist. It was just like a really odd reaction. And then, um, if you just think about it, at my age, to be at the centre of a film, I still think that's rare opportunity. So I thought, oh, God, this is the most wonderful thing. What are you going to Darwin for? None of your business. Gentlemen, would you ask? Well, I want to play football. And he wants to kill himself. I became familiar with it when uh, I was helping a couple of other young brothers in Melbourne to audition for it. And that's when I suddenly realised that we were doing some sort of multimedia project and, and um, the first team were there by casting me. So they knew me. And we, I we worked together on Money Twisted yeah, City, yeah, our second film. Like sure, yeah. yeah. And so basically, um, Simsy was, was giving me an opportunity give him an opportunity to be a good director for this film. And <laughs> so I was like, oh, interesting. How we go. So I, I know, I know. <laughs> so, you know, I gave, him, I gave him that first chance and it was sort of, it was okay, it was all right. But I, I, no, absolutely, doing this film was awesome. And uh, I think um, working with somebody for the second time changed my whole relationship with him as an actor and as a director. He did a really, really great audition process with me. And, and to be honest, I, he wasn't my first choice to put it on. I had someone in mind that I thought would be fantastic for it. And um, and Mark actually, you know, insisted on coming in, and we worked with Peter and Gregory in Great Canoe. And I said, Mark, this is pretty good. Come back and do it again. And we did about four sessions in a row, I think. Um, and he was great. And, and I asked him, I said to him, look, we're going away for a series of three or four months, Joel. Just bring us your audition tape. This is a great role. This is a thing that I think you could bring to it that more than you've given us so far. And I was so thrilled when he turned up. We all were <coughs> in William Creek. And because we were shooting at Broken Hills without Mark, we, we set up the whole world. And then we had to go, I wonder what it's going to be like when Tilly turns up. And everyone was just blown away. On the first day of the audition, they went, wow. And he introduced Hans Christian Patois and Michael Corgan, you know, the local lingo in, in um, Edu's and Dada. He'd come and done some work with the kids there earlier. We'd arrived um, at the week before. Mm. And so he, he, he became part of that. And that I, I think just from the, from that moment, the crew and every, all of us felt like, you know what, we've, we've got the chance here to make a really good film. It felt like it was really time to push the rain mm. and just do all the fun stuff. Well, tell me about that. So you're, you're, you're living the movie in a sense while you're making it. Mm. Uh, the conditions can be tough. I mean, you're, if you're really, you know, committing to that journey, uh, were there any particular days on set where you're like, this is... This is just, this is tough going. I'm really pleased we didn't do it two months earlier, which is when we thought we were going to shoot. And it was uh, about 38 degrees every day. Mm. But uh, once we got out there, it actually, some mornings just looked cold. Um, so the weather was kind to us. Flies were awful. Oh. Um, just trying to keep them off the camera, let alone us. Yeah. With a, with a film that is centred around a topic like death, like euthanasia, like the right to die, there is... Uh, it's obviously a hot button issue, and people have very passionate feelings about it. I can imagine you, as the movie was about, as you screened it, you're going to come up against people who have strong feelings against it, and also very strong feelings for it, and who have been heartened by it. Michael, can you talk a little bit about the kind of experiences you've had with audience members who've connected to your film, either positively or negatively? And it's been so surprisingly positive. I, I really expected, as you said, at the screening, to have you know a bunch of people say stand up and say that's not how euthanasia should work. I don't think blah blah blah. But when people are very respectful of, of the position put in the film, when it doesn't actually argue strongly for one particular stance, it just raises a whole bunch of. It, it's it sort of can be tough in either one. You and I have to be a hundred percent sure that this is what you want. Rex, how hard has it been to convince your loved ones that the decision you are about to make is the right one? There's no one else. Well, I'm very pleased that people aren't picketing, you know, um, the, the film yet in the theatre. I think it's a huge advantage to know that not all the dogs and the rabbits are pooping before they come in. <laughs> and we're not getting the last temptation of flies to the tail either yet, so we'll see how we go. Hey, there's still time. Yeah, yeah. we haven't offended any Scientologists either, yeah. so we're still, don't worry. 
We got film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that's on the show. Thanks so much for your time. Yeah, pleasure. Thank you. Thanks. I'm a cab driver, Doc. So I'm going to drive my cab until I can't drive it anymore. Hey, guys. If you enjoyed that video, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel or find more of our stuff at studentedge.com.au.